Programming in C Sharp and ASP.NET. This is Burdette Wilson, your instructor and guide, as we take a closer look at how to program in C Sharp and use ASP.NET. So um, here we are, gang. We're um, looking at uh, writing our first program um, in Hello World. And um, I hope you're excited about this because this is going to be a lot of fun. It's always fun when we get to actually write code. Um, so let's just um, go ahead and um, get into that. Um, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to um, we're going to be writing a program. We know that when we uh, code, the fastest way for we for us to learn is to actually write code. Please do not watch these videos and just sit back and listen to me and believe that you're going to understand coding because you're not. You're not going to you're not going to gain the skills that we need to gain. For you to be a successful programmer. Um, so please make sure that you are watching the video and writing the code at the exact same time. I like to a lot of times do this as a split screen. Part of the screen is uh, watching me on the video and the other part um, is you actually with Visual Studios open um, being able to type in the code and do what I'm doing on the screen. Um, this is the best way to learn how to code. Okay, and, and you know, the, we want to fail fast, and that's one of the keys to learning programming. The more problems that we have to solve, the better programmers we become. So don't get frustrated if your code does not work the first time. That's great. That's what we want it to do. And I want you to have to go back and, and do it again or rewind the video, um, as we would say in the old days, uh, take the video back and watch it forward again and watch everything that I do and all of the code that I put in. Now, I know sometimes you may get frustrated and you may think, hey, this code doesn't work. What he's doing doesn't work. Um, there's a lot of things like that, but realize there's nothing wrong with Visual Studios. There's nothing wrong with the code that I'm writing because you watch me click run and you get to see that code in operation. That means my code works. So then there's only one other factor that can cause your code not to work. And the sooner we realize that, the better coders will become. And that one factor is us. We did something wrong and it's okay to do something wrong. And sometimes you may have to do something three or four or 12 times to get it correct. Um, and that's okay. A lot of times students will tell me they get the most out of the videos when they go back and watch them the second or third time. So uh, do, not be, uh, do not be upset if you have to watch it again. And so um, we're going to use Visual Studios. Uh, we're going to use that to uh, write our program in, and um, we're going to uh, write the Hello World program. It is the first program um, in learning a new language, whether you're learning Python, whether you're learning C Sharp, whether you're learning C++, um, or any Java, any other languages. Uh, a lot of times we write this program that is called Hello World. It's that traditional program. And so um, don't, be, uh, don't be too uh, surprised when you start to learn other languages and the first thing they tell you that you're going to do is write Hello World. So um, let's go ahead and uh, let's, uh, let's get into Visual Studios. Okay, um, so I'm here on my desktop. Your desktop will probably look a little different. If you remembered in the last video, we loaded in the tools that we're going to use. Uh, I happen to have my little Visual Studios down here. You can also go in and look for it under your, um, your applications, and you just come down to, um, to uh, Microsoft Visual Studios, and uh, that's where you will find it. I have put mine right here on the toolbar because I'm going to use it quite a bit. 
And so I'm going to click that. And let's go ahead and open that up. And here we are in the launch page for Visual Studio's 2019 community version. Okay, so we are in Visual Studio's 2019 community version. And uh, I'm going to uh, start a new project uh, from here. And this is the launch screen. These are all projects that I have been working on. This is where you'll find the projects that you've already started and worked on. Yours probably pretty clear right at the moment. Um, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say under Get Started, I'm going to say Open a Project or Solution. I don't want that. Open a local folder. I don't want that. I want create a new project. And so I'm going to come down here to open uh, or create a new project and I'm going to click that. And that's going to bring me to this. It's going to say at the top, create new project. And it says recently, uh, recent project templates, okay? And you may not have a lot over here or you may have quite a few things. And what we're going to do right now is I'm going to click on this WPF app. So if you don't see that on yours, just come up here and just put in WPF and notice that it starts bringing things up. And WP app net, go ahead and do the net core, um, which is right here. And so go ahead and let's, let's click on that. And then I'm going to click next. Okay. And then here, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put, hello, world. There we go. Uh, I've done hello world sometimes before, so I'm kind of worried that I might have one already. I'm just going to put a one behind mine. You can leave yours as hello world, and then I'm going to say create. Okay, so let's go ahead and open that up. And um, so now we are looking at it, and I'm sure looking at this, you're going, oh my gosh, what is all this stuff? Um, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, and uh, I'm going to push, pull this down just a little bit. You might want to do that to yours. Um, I'm also going to pull this down just a little bit because we don't need all that right now. Everything we're going to do is going to be in here. And uh, let's go ahead and let's blow this up. Let's see what 100 does. Oh, 100 not bad. Let's blow it up a little more. Let's say 150. You can adjust yours based upon the size of your screen that you're working on and all that. But right in here, right in the middle where it says main window, this is where we're going to do... Um, our work, okay? And so if you could imagine this as a desktop application, a program that's on your computer that you would click on and it would open up, that's what we're looking at right here in the center. Okay, so we want to we wanna do a little bit with this. Now, notice some other things here. Um, I'm going to come over here and um, right here, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller for right now because I want to show this. This is our file structure, okay? This is the file structure of our program. It's where things are inside of our program. Um, <clears throat> notice I can open and close these little sections um, based upon what I want to work on, okay? And so right now we're here. We're in this main window. Notice main window uh, XAML is highlighted, and that's what we're working on right here. <clears throat> If we come up here to these tabs, there's one that says Main Window XAML that matches this. There's also one that says Main Window, window XAML.cs. Um, if I click this open, like I'm opening a file, I can see this Main Window XAML.cs over here. And that matches this tab that's across the top of here. And if I was, we're just going to click on it. And notice that it opens all this stuff. You're probably going, oh my gosh, once again. Don't worry about any of this right now. Don't pay any attention to any of it. Uh, it's not important in what we're going to do. We're going to learn about it later on as we go through these classes. 
Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do, notice there's a light bulb up here flashing. And um, here where it says using system, there's a little minus button. Uh, go ahead and click that and close that. So we don't have as much on our screen. All right, let's go ahead and I'm going to blow this up a little bit. Now you can see that code a little bit better, okay? For right now, we're going to ignore all this. I'm going to show you how to use it. Um, I just want you to basically follow along with everything that I'm doing, and that's how we're going to learn to code. All right, so we're going to come back over here. I want to click on that main window, Zamel uh, tab there at the top again, and that's going to bring me back over to this window. If you come over here, notice this says Toolbox, Toolbox at the top. I'm going to just open this up just a little bit more, Toolbox. And um, inside Toolbox, there's a whole bunch of things here. Uh, for right now, I want you to come down here and it says All WPF. I just want you to close that. General is closed. That's good. And now we just have Common WPF controls. And you might want to look through those. Don't get too worried about it right now, what it says. Um, we're just going to use a couple of those on there in what we're going to do. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to take where it says label, label, and I'm going to grab that and I'm going to pull that across to my page and I'm going to drop it. And notice it says label there on it. I'm going to open this up just a little bit. There we go. And um, where it says label right here, okay, um, if you notice down here under properties, it says label. So we are pointed to this. It is highlighted and it says name label. Well, you know what? We're going to change that just a little bit. I'm going to go in here where it says name, and uh, I'm going to come here, and I want to put in, uh, instead of label, I'm going to leave it label. I'm going to capitalize it, label, and I'm going to call it label um, uh, message. Label message, okay? And uh, then I'm going to come down here where it says label, it says content label. So what this saying is this label has the word label in it. See that? So you see where it says label and then label. So I'm going to change that um, to say message. Okay, now it's going to, when I hit enter, when I click off of this, it changes, notice it changed this to say message. Okay, that's what I wanted it to do. And um, we're not going to mess with a lot of the other things about it right now. We're just going to leave that on there, our message, okay? So I'm going to come back up here and um, I'm going to click off that. Notice the little box goes away. Uh, and I'm going to come over here back into our toolbox and I want to grab button. And if you think about it, all of the programs, a lot of the programs you have will have a button on it. I'm going to make that a little bigger. Go ahead and do that. And uh, let's even make it this way just a little bit bigger. Okay. So now notice I've got this highlighted because I just put it in here. And um, over here it says properties button. Okay, we're just going to leave that so it says button. And uh, down here, it says content button. Okay, um, so let's, let's have a little fun with that. I'm going to say, go into where it says content. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to say, push me. Just like that. Push me. And now when I click back here. Notice it changed it to say push me. All right. Uh, I've changed what it says inside this button. I'm going to change the button. Uh, let's see. Layout. No, we're not going to do that. Let's just leave it the way it is. 
For right now, let's just leave it the way it is. Uh, this is uh, going to be simple. Uh, later on, we'll do some changes. I'll show you how to change the colors on it. I'll show you how to do some other things. But for right now, let's just leave it just like that as push me. And so I'm going to uh, click out of that. And now I have uh, a label that says message and a uh, button that says push me. Okay, so now watch really closely. I'm going to go back over to my button and instead of just, if I click it once, it does this. But I want you to click it twice, very rapidly, and look what it does. It takes me from this tab to my main windows, zamel.cs tag. This is where my code is for the page we were just working on. So if you can imagine that the page is a picture and this is where the code is that does stuff. Okay, the other one is just to see and this one is where we do stuff at. Okay, so notice what it says here. Private, void, button click. Okay, forget all this. Don't even pay any attention to it right now. Private, void, button click. So that tells us when we click the button on the other page, this is where it's going to go. If I would have changed the name to button, the, that name would be to here, but it would say click afterwards, okay? All right, so now that I've got that, if you click this button, nothing happens right now, right? Nothing's going to happen because we haven't given it any code to do anything yet. So now we're going to give it some code to do something. So the first thing we're going to do, and for right now, just follow along and do exactly what I'm doing. Um, if, you're, if you're stuck, if I went too fast, I want you to go back, uh, just rewind this video, go back and uh, watch that section again so that you can get the hang of what we're doing. But so now I'm in there and uh, in that, and I've clicked in between these two um, brackets, okay? And inside those two brackets, I'm just going to hit enter a little bit. I'm going to create a little room. Now, I must be inside those brackets. That's where all the instructions are for this button, is inside those two brackets. And so inside that bracket, I'm going to say, okay, so I'm going to type in here string And uh, in this string, I'm going to name this string um, message. And inside of message, I'm going to put in hello world. And then I'm going to put a colon in. Okay. Now notice that hello world is inside of, uh, inside a quote. Okay. This is very important. It's also very important to always remember uh, at the end of any statement, we're going to put a semicolon. That's kind of like uh, a period that we would use in English, but in here we're going to use it to say, hey, that's the end of an idea. Now you're going to be saying, hey, wait a minute, there's something wrong. There's a little green uh, squiggly underneath the sign message. Don't worry about that right now. We're not going to worry about that at all, okay? So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, remember, we have something called label, uh, label message. Notice here it is says label message. I just typed in an L and notice this little box comes up with information. Um, this is uh, this is actually Visual Studios giving us clues, some auto clues to help us be able to code better, more efficiently. A lot of times if you forget what you called something, this is a quick way to figure it out. Or if you're looking for a set of code, and you're not sure what it is, but you kind of know it might be called this or it might be called that, you can look it up here and see what that is. And notice here under L, it gave us all kinds of choices 
Uh, right now, we know label message is what we called our little label on the other side. So we're going to click that. So label message dot, and then um, I actually want content. Because if you remember, content is where we got the, uh, where we put the information in of what it said uh, in our label. That's where we entered our uh, message. We wrote message in there. And I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to just put an equal sign, and I'm going to put message that we wrote there from up above and I'm going to put a colon. Okay, so don't worry about what this is doing right now. Just go ahead and do what I did, and then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit Save All. Make sure there's a save, which is this little, it looks like disk, it looks like very old style disks. And uh, then we're going to click this and we're going to say Save, and now I have saved my program and um, we, we have not made any changes over here. Everything's still the same. We have just added code to this button. So let's, uh, let's do something else. We've go gone ahead and saved it. I'm going to go up here. See, it says, Hello World. And mine says, Hello World 1. Yours is just going to say, Hello World. And we're going to click that. And we're going to actually run this program. So it's going to begin to do what it needs to do to run it. Uh, my, uh, oh, I'm going to close that and, um, okay, and there it is. Okay, so now my program is running. Notice here it's giving me some information because I'm in a test mode right now. And it's checking, saying, hey, what, what is this doing? And that's okay. So now I'm going to come up here, I'm going to open this up, and notice this is what my window would look like. Um, and I'm going to, it says message, and I'm going to click the push me button. And notice when I click the push me button, it says hello world. Okay, so there we go, it says hello world. Uh, so I have written our first program uh, we have created a button, and we have learned how that button will uh, actively work based upon the code that we've entered. All right, that all worked well. Let's go ahead and close that. There's more ways to stop a program. Uh, I'm just going to show you that one for right now. And um, so let's go ahead. And uh, we had gone to Visual Studios to uh, work on our, uh, on our project. Um, so what did we really learn? Well, we learned how to start a new project, uh, especially a WPF project. Um, we learned a little, just a very minor amount, about some basic formatting things that we could do. We learned how to add a label. We learned how to add a button. We also learned a little bit about basic coding. We basically saw how to add a button to our project and to get to the code that controls that button. So uh, that's going to end this video. We're going to go to our next video, which is going to be CSASP004, Understanding Hello World. This will be our next step to being able to figure out exactly what did we do in our code. This is Mr. Wilson, your instructor and guide, and I look forward to seeing you there.